about the glorious salvation, the glorious salvation, what Jesus Christ did for you and I at Calvary, at the cross, at the blood, at his burial, and at his resurrection. And uh, we enter that glorious salvation through asking God to forgive us of our sins, that grace to come to him and get baptized in Jesus' name, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then he gives us a gift, again, no works, full of grace, of the Holy Spirit, speaking with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And this enters into this glorious salvation. And it is a straight gate. It is a narrow way. Many will seek to enter therein, not be able, according to Jesus. So Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 3. We're going to just read a lot of scripture tonight, but I just feel led of the Lord to do that. Hebrews 2 and 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? We'll say that one more time. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Salvation. If you don't mind, let's everybody say great salvation. Great, great salvation. salvation. That's it's awesome. It's incredible. Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. Great to see everybody in the house of God tonight. Amen. There are basically two mistakes I have noticed that people make, and I have made it, maybe you've made it as well in regards to salvation. The first mistake is, is how lost we were or how lost we are. Most of us think, you know, we're, you know, when we're unsaved that we're just, you know, we're unsaved, but we can get saved at any moment and, and everything is fine. But let's look at what the scripture says about that. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18 looking at a couple mistakes people make about this glorious, great salvation. And it tells us this, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, that means we barely make it in. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So that leads us to believe that, I mean, when we're lost, we're really lost. If you miss heaven by an inch, you've still lost it for eternity. And so if you miss heaven by just a, a fraction, you have gained hell for all eternity. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 12, also tells us how lost we were or how lost we are without Jesus. And it says this, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Yeah. Having no hope and without God in the world. That is pretty lost. Revelation 14, 11, this is the final end of those that are not saved. It says this in Revelation 14, 11, the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. They have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Notice, the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night. No rest, day nor night. In Revelation 20 and 10, we read more about this horrible torment that wakes those that don't know Jesus Christ. I'm reminded of an atheist telling a neighbor one time, said, you purport to be a Christian, but if you were really a Christian and you believed what the Bible says, you would have done anything possible to see me saved. Because you're telling me that there is, without Christ, an eternity in hell. So, Revelation 20, verse 10 says, and the devil that deceived them was cast in a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Jesus, speaking on the subject of hell, says this in Mark chapter 9, the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 9, the second of the four Gospels in our New Testament. Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 43. 
And it says, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Hell never ends. And it is fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, very last verse of this great Olivet Discourse, we read Jesus saying this, those that miss heaven, and those that and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So this is the plea of God and the plea of the church of God. We want everybody to be saved. I don't want anybody to go uh, and be lost. I don't want anybody. That's the reason that that has entered our vernacular as a curse word to tell people to go spend eternity without Jesus Christ because there's really no greater condemnation or curse you could put on someone yeah. and the wish that they be eternally separated from Jesus Christ. That's the reason another word that has to do with being eternally lost is another epitaph. It is a curse word or swear word in our language and is not suitable to be said by, by Christians unless it's in a biblical context or theological Christian context. Because when you curse somebody like that, you are wishing the very worst thing that could ever happen to anyone. So people don't tend to realize exactly how lost we are. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 6, Romans 5 and 6 says this. It says, for when we were yet without Christ, when we were up without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. From we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So we were without strength. I mean, we just, we were in very bad shape without Jesus Christ. I think everybody here knows that. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 and 19 tells us, and it's a picture of Paul, that great apostle, of what he was like trying to be a Pharisee, trying to live for God, but without the Holy Ghost, without the Spirit of God, without the new birth, he just couldn't. And so in Romans 7, 18, it says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So before we know Jesus Christ, we're like, I'm going to do good. And so often we end up doing bad. But when you get the power of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, yeah. whom the Son is made free is free indeed. Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is liberty. Aren't you glad about that? You. you can live in truth and power and anointing. Ephesians, one last verse we'll look at about how lost we are without Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 puts it very succinctly. And it says, you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead. We're in time past. You walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. A lot to look at and a lot to unpack there. But we were dead in trespasses and sins. We walked according to the course of this world, what the world wanted us to do. But that was being led by the prince of the power of the air. And it's a demonic spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. It doesn't mean they're demonically possessed, but it does mean they're demonically influenced. Yes. So everybody who doesn't know Jesus Christ is in that same boat. So that's the first thing. The first mistake people make is we really don't realize exactly how lost we are and the grievous circumstances that we're in that we're one heartbeat away from hell. Right. One heartbeat away from being in eternity lost forever. The second thing people don't really realize sometimes is what happens at salvation. It's a great salvation. I mean, it's not a little bit salvation. It's a great salvation. I mean, it is incredible. Getting the Holy Ghost, getting baptized in Jesus' name, getting your sins forgiven and remitted. There's nothing better this side of heaven. 
You can make a million dollars, a billion dollars, or a trillion dollars, or a quadrillion dollars. Doesn't matter. This is the greatest thing in all the world. You, you know, you never have to worry about hyperinflation and losing its value or anything because salvation is eternal. It never loses its value. Amen. So Colossians 1.13 tells us about this great salvation. We're going to read a few scriptures about this great salvation. It says, he has delivered us. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So Satan no longer has power in your life. I'm glad the devil has zero power in my life. The only power the devil's got in my life is I give him any power in my life. Other than that, he has no power in my life. Amen. So he's delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Remember, when we were unsaved, we walked according to the course of this world. But now we're walking under kingdom principles. We're walking in as citizens of heaven. I'm glad about that. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. A lot of people go here for new converts classes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. New cre you got a new name. You got a new spirit. You got a new destiny. Thank you, Lord. you and I are new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Your old destiny of hell, all your sins that you've ever committed are passed away. Old Thank things you, are passed away. The old judgments that were on the old nature, that old hatred, that old dirty human spirit you had, so to speak, Thank sinful you, nature. Right. Old Thank things you. are passed away. Behold, all, all, all. Yeah. Things are become new. You. you got a new name, a new citizenship. You're born again of water and spirit. You got a new spirit living on the inside of you. You got the name of Jesus. Friend, I'm telling you, I'm glad whom the Son is made free is free indeed. Yeah. Verse number 20. It says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. So remember, we're in a new citizenship. So we're ambassadors. We're supposed to represent heaven on this earth. Everybody else is under the influence of the devil. I mean, they're doing Jeffrey Epstein stuff and, and all this stuff that's going on, all kind of weird garbage that's going on in this world. I mean, the world is just in chaos. It's in flames. It's and, and it's just doing what the world does. I mean, the world gives you a World War II and a World War I and a Hitler and a Lenin and a Stalin and a Mao and a Pol Pot and and all, Ho Chi Minh, and all of the world's just doing what the world always does. Yes. But we're ambassadors for Jesus yes. Christ. Hallelujah. We've got peace, we've got power, we've yes. got love, we've got anointing, we've got truth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we're ambassadors here on this earth. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So we're just representing the kingdom of heaven here on earth right now. We're shining as light in the midst of a very dark world. And then in verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus didn't know any sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We're righteous because he declares us righteous. Because we're no longer who we were. The old person that deserved all the penalties of sin, you're a new creature. Yes. So you no longer have that deserving penalty of sin. Because, again, whom the Son is made free is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He is the one that has the keys. Jesus is the door. He opens the door to salvation. And now we're in Christ. Thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful for that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30, tells us what you and I have in salvation. Jesus has become unto us our wisdom. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, of who of God is made unto us wisdom. You say, well, I think I can get along in my wisdom. Well, you go ahead and get along in your wisdom. You see where that's got the world. Right. It's got it in a horrible mess. God is in $26 trillion in debt. You keep thinking you can get along in your wisdom. Jesus, the creator of everything, is our wisdom. And he's our righteousness. 
Our righteousness is filthy rags. But everything we do, we do it as unto Jesus Christ, and he clothes us with his righteousness. He is our sanctification. He set you and I apart for glory. And he is our redemption. He's the only one that could buy us from sin. We were all destined to hell. But Jesus paid the price with his precious blood. That resurrected blood. I'm glad about that. How about you? Praise God. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. So great salvation is glorious salvation. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Doesn't it feel good to take a Holy Ghost bath? The name of Jesus bath, where every sin, every gambling, every lie, every cheat, every everything you and I ever done that was against God was washed. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified. Yes. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. The world is not worthy of you. Ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You're justified. When you're justified, we had a, a, a case like that in the United States of America where Roger Stone's sentence was commuted. Now, I, I didn't really delve real deep into that. I just kind of read some headlines and a paragraph and an article. But I think there's actually something deeper than a commutation, and that is a pardon. And a pardon is if it never happened. And that's what happens when you and I get the Holy Ghost and we're born again of water and spirit. Yes, Lord. It's as if any of the sins we've committed never happened. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're adopted into the family of God as children of Almighty God. I'm talking about a glorious salvation here tonight. Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 6 says this. And hath raised us up together... And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, where is the body of Christ right now? Now, we know the body of Christ is a church. We're right here. But where is the physical body of the man Christ Jesus, the glorified body? Where is it? It's sitting on the throne, right? Yes. In heaven. And his spirit dwells in us. His spirit is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And so, but his glorified body is sitting on the throne. But by one spirit, we're baptized into one body. Amen. So he's sitting on the throne, and we're kind of like sitting on the throne with him. All that means is, is the victories that he won are transferred to you and I. Yes. And if he won the victories, as long as we stick with Jesus, we're going to win the victories as well. Amen. No weapon formed against you and I can prosper. He's made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm thankful for that. Matter of fact, we ought to just glorify the Lord for that. We're looking about how saved we are. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says this. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. When you got the Holy Ghost, you didn't get a spirit of fear, but of power. Aren't you glad you got power in the Holy Ghost? Amen. I mean, the Amen. devils know there's one God and they tremble. That one God lives inside of you. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood. When you and I go to pray, the devil trembles because we've got power. Yes, when Jesus yes. said all power in heaven and earth give it unto him, you and I have got power. Because we're on the winning side. I'm thankful for that. Amen. So he's not giving us a spirit of fear. Don't ever be fearful of things like coronavirus and uh, the things coming on the world. The Bible says don't be concerned about that. Right. But, you know, thank God that your, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Look up to heaven from whence cometh our salvation. Our salvation cometh from the Lord who made Amen. the heaven and the earth. So he's given us power and of love. When people do you wrong, you can still love them, can't you? That's right. Amen. We're not supposed to grudge. You can still love them. He's given us a spirit of love. You'll never know what true love is till you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And of a sound mind. In the generation you and I are living in, that is of more vital importance than I have ever seen it in my life. 
Satan is the father of lies, and lies are at a premium right now. Truth is falling into the street, but he gave you and I the power of a sound or a complete mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes. He's given us mighty weapons of our warfare and the whole armor of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, listen to what else this great, glorious salvation gives us. I mean, this is the greatest thing in the world. When word gets out, I mean, we won't be able to build fences big enough to keep people out of the church of the living God. Satan's the one that blinds people's mind from seeing about how great salvation is. And sometimes he blinds the children of God's mind so we don't see how great his salvation is. But I'm glad I know how great his salvation is. How about you? That's the reason you got to pray every day. You got to fast. You got to read the word of God. We need to come together the more often as we see that day approaching because faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, more glories of the new birth. It says, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. We're the children of almighty God. I'm thankful for that here tonight. Amen. So this glorious salvation, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, really goes in depth about this glory of salvation. Now, our feet, you may come, you may be hurt tonight. You may not be feeling good tonight. It, it, problems, storms, but I'm telling you, above the storm, Jesus is still on the throne. Yes. One thing flying a little bit over the course of years that is really a lesson God has put in my head. No matter how serious the storm here is on earth, you get up just a few thousand feet. Sometimes 30 or 40,000 feet, the sun is always shining. The storm is limited in its scope, in its height, mm -hmm. and in its area. Right. It doesn't rain always. Right. Second Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You want to know how to be godly? Get Jesus. You want to know what life is and that more abundantly? Get Jesus. He's given unto us all things. Notice it's a free gift. Uh, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. His glory won't give to another. So the only glory we have is the power of the Holy Ghost shining through us. And he's called you to glory and to virtue, which is moral excellence. Verse 4, if you don't mind, let's all stand. Verse number 4, the glorious new birth, the glories of salvation, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That there's a new heaven, that there's a new earth with your new birth, that you and I get to walk where there's no more pain, no more heartache, in the presence of Jesus Christ forever and ever. Great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Jesus, mind of Christ living in us, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Whenever you can begin to see holiness, not as you mean I can't, like Satan tried to portray it, that Eve in the garden, you mean I can't eat of that fruit, but if you could ever get it like you are too good to eat of that fruit, uh -huh. that Jesus has got you life and that more abundantly, yes. and the fruit of this world will just send you and I to hell. Yes. If you can ever start looking at it properly, scripturally, then living for God becomes much easier. Yes. Because you're not constantly looking at what you think you're missing, which yes. is poison, spiritual poison. Amen. And you're sitting there looking at the glories of the new birth. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul, he said, I've got my mind fixed. I'm pressing towards the mark of a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I wonder if we could just pray together right now. And ask God to help all of us see the wonders of the new birth. If there's anybody here that doesn't have the new birth, you can get the new birth tonight. 
You can repent of your sins. You can get baptized in Jesus' name tonight. You can receive the Holy Ghost tonight, even if you're watching it on video, on YouTube, or on Facebook. Let's pray together. God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for this glorious salvation. God, help all of us to have our minds open and stayed open to how awesome it is to be saved. Never let us lose the wonder of salvation. God, let us always access all the power that you've given unto us. God, it may be hard. The way may be difficult sometimes, but you're there with us. God, you're carrying us, bearing one another's burdens, and so fulfilling the law of Christ. God, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. God, Joe, you are with us always, even unto the end of the world. God, I glorify you. I love you. Open our eyes to see this glorious salvation. This glorious salvation. This glorious salvation. Let us praise you. Let us encourage people to worship in this glorious salvation. God, let us see people born again of water and spirit delivered and translated out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of your dear son. God, in Jesus' mighty name, let it be on our lips, on our heart, everybody we meet, everybody everywhere, God, in Jesus' name. Why don't we just thank the Lord together? Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus likened finding salvation to a treasure in a field. And he said, for which a man would sell everything he's got to get that treasure. Nothing on this earth is worth missing heaven over. Why don't we just glorify Jesus again? Thank you, God, for glorious salvation. This so great salvation. Glory to the name of Jesus. I love each and every one of you. Praying for you. I know we're praying one for the other. God's going to give us the victory through himself he gives us the increase hallelujah keep praying keep fasting keep seeking the lord god's got great things for you and i amen and uh, tonight if god has laid it on your heart to give or your discipline of giving uh brother Wright, brother dan will be with the bag over here if you would like to give tonight and brother dan why don't you come dismiss us with a word of prayer once again hallelujah why don't we pray together amen Lord Jesus, you brought us from a mighty long way. God, then you're the way, you're the truth, you're the life, oh God. Oh God. God, you brought us from a mighty long way, God. Hallelujah. Your church is still a soul saving station. Yes. God, when I came in here, I was not perfect. God, I was not perfect. God, you healed us. You healed us with your word. God, you sent forth your word. And God, it was life. It was life when I heard it, Lord Jesus. Help us all to continue to take your word, live it, yes. take it in, Lord God. We thank you for what you continue to do and what you have done, God. Let, let us leave here, let, let us leave here encouraged, encouraged through the week, God. Bless us, keep us, in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Praise God. Hallelujah.